So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Ming Wei Zhang. I'm coming from Intel Labs. Um, this uh, this is a joint uh, project with uh, you know University of Delaware. So because of some reasons, the first author and the third author cannot come. So I will be the presenter of this paper. So I hope through my presentation uh, I can you know pr uh, illustrate a clear and uh, you know straightforward understanding towards the novelties of this paper. So allow me to start. Um, the topic of this presentation is a robust and efficient defense against use after free exploits via concurrent pointer sweeping. So before we come to the details of this uh, talk, let's see uh, a simple you know chart which shows the, actually the soaring uh, number of use after free exploits in the recent years. So we can see from 2012 and 2000, 2015 the number of UAF bugs you know exploits actually rapidly grows. So how does the use after free exploit work? So general, I, you know, in this presentation, I generally split the use, up, use after free exploit into four steps, right? The first two steps basically involves with the developer, where C, in C and C++ programmers basically allocate an object, right? And it's uh, using, you know, malloc and then return, uh, uh, you know, a pointer and, you know, assign to a variable, PTR. So in the st second stage, this pointer is free. Right now, the, the you know the variable point you know PTR becomes a dangling pointers. Right, things get a little weird because you know in the th third stage where you know this chunk of memory has been reallocated by some you know other objects uh, controlled by attackers. Right, so now this dangling pointer pointing something you know uh, can be malicious. Right, in the final stage things you know get really really bad because the uh, dangling pointer is dereferenced and uh, this kind of a dereferencing the dangling pointer may cause further problems such as control flow hijacking memory corruptions critical information you know leakage things like that which may further cause more uh, even more serious issues so on the other hand the, there are several lines of research work on defense part, right? There are also, you know, one of the most famous one is Azure Sanitizer, right? So Azure, the, one of the key points of Azure Sanitizer and, you know, related research work is basically doing checks just before every point of reference, right? So because, so by doing so, basically, you know, uh, you know, uh, adding checks before point of reference, it allows you basically check, okay, what, am I, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, checking, you know, dereference something that is do does not this pointer does not belong to. So, doing so, this this could uh, actually prevent use after free very effectively. However, since you know pointer dereference is such an intensive operations, it is um, you know um, it creates a lot of overhead at runtime. So, uh, Azure Sanitizer basically can cause over three x overhead. So, to you know. Instead of do doing that, so some alternative research work saying, okay, can we do, you know, not at this do defense and not at this stage, right? So another alternative research work is basically can saying that, okay, can we do delayed free, right? Delayed free basically saying, okay, you have dangling pointers. Yeah, you have, you know, objects that are controlled by yourself. But what if your dangling pointers cannot point to, to things that are under your control? So that kind of thing is actually mitigates the problem. However, there's you know you have limited memory. Sometimes you have still have to refree those objects and reallocate the, the reallocated objects still could be you know occupied in those locations pointed to by dangling pointers, right? So this is the mitigation. But this mi mitigation is effective and, and so to some extent it's also used by the you know state of our browsers from Microsoft, I guess. Um, so there is the third lines. So the idea of it basically is like you can see that from stage two to st stage four, there are always going to be dangling pointers involved, right? So it, it, until it is, you know, dereferenced in the last stage. So, and the simple idea is like, can we just remove those dangling pointers, right? So that even if they, they so there were no, there will not be a such dangerous, the fourth step, right? So following this idea, this paper uh, called Peace Sweeper is, you know, focused on the idea of sweeping the, uh, uh, dangling pointers. So before we come to details, um, there are actually existing work, right? There are several works and uh, we basically categorize using two metrics, the robustness, you know, whether it is able to defeat uh, uh, use after free bugs and, uh, you know, exploits, and also the runtime overhead, right? We can see from this picture, actually, Dan San and Oscar actually achieve much, you know, a very good result because its overhead is low and the uh, robustness is very high. 
Uh, and this is our goal, right? We are trying to do a much better performance at a, at the same level of you know uh, effectiveness. So uh, our result, basically, to illustrate, we actually achieved 12%, 12 percent, 12.5 percent runtime overhead in comparison to 40 uh, percent overhead, uh, and that achieved by a Dense and Oscar. So. Before we go to you know uh, the details of how we implement this, so the general idea of the pointer sweeping based UAF defense looks like this way, right? So this is very li simple lines of C code, right? Where a pointer points to a you know just allocated memory, so P. So now that you have a pointer pointing an object, right? And then this pointer maybe as the program can continues to run. This pointer may be pro further propagated to some other pointers. Right? Now there are two pointers pointing to an object, and finally, you know, at some point the program may choose to free this object. Right. So the idea of this pointer sweeping is basically saying that okay, instead of just we have a pointer to object relationship, can we have an extra uh, extra relationship which do the further to the reverse mapping? For example, uh, if the object knows how many pointers pointing to that. Right, we can actually, you know, by the time you do free, you basically can say, okay, these are pointers are danglings because I'm freeing, so just mark them as that beef. So that's the basic ideas. Uh, however, so in order to make this effective and, and efficient, you have you have to, you know, uh, uh, you know, any kind of research has to, you know, uh, deal with all three sources of overhead. Right. For example, you have to, you know, intercepting malloc and those memory allocations to to know that okay, these are my, my objects starting from this and with this size, right? And secondly, you have to track in pointers, right? Because pointers may actually, you know, be assigned some well. Actually, you have to know, right? Oh, this actually there are many more pointers pointing to this object. Because of that, by the time you do free, you can do two things, right? Not only just free the objects, we can also free those pointers, right? So that, that's the general idea of this. Uh, of this uh, lines of research in general. So the most state of art work following these ideas, but they make different trade-offs, right? You can see Dan San is one of the work published in 2017. What it does is basically, you know, as I mentioned, maintain a very heavyweight, you know, pointer, uh, object pointer relationship. The, the challenge is that, you know, pointer, if the pointer just pointed to the base of the, an object, it is, you know, pretty much fine because you can probably look use hash table lookup, tree lookup, those kind of things fine. But the difficulties like sometimes or many times the pointer may point to the middle of an object, right? This may cause further problems to uh, how to use a pointer to figure out the, the base address of an object, and then that's that's why it is, you know, the loss of overhead. Asuka do the opposite, right? It, it actually has a very good uh, pointer tracking capability, but actually every time you allocate pointers, uh, allocate an object, it creates a lot more overhead because it's used address aliasing. And there's also going to be a TRB pressure. So in compare, our idea is like, okay, what if we are just doing, you know, a, a simpler job, right? When you do pointer, uh, you know, object allocation, deallocation, and pointer tracking, let's simplify all these instrumentation of the user uh, applications, application thread. Let's throw the dirty work to a parallel thread. Uh, as we can see from the client side, actually, we have a lot of, uh, we have extra cores and, you know, extra CPU resources. Why not just using that, right? So. So by doing so, our result basically we can see that overall runtime performance is 12%, 12.5%. Definitely also it also includes the parallel running thread. We're gonna show you the details in the later. So before we show the details of our approach, basically we can say uh, we show our uh, thread model. So we're trying to defeat use after free attacks, right? We're not solving buffer overflows, right? Buffer overflows is out of the scope of this paper. Our strength is better over uh, better uh, runtime performance and uh, was uh, you know uh, uh, you know it's also safe to multi-threading uh, programs right and uh, we use parallel pointer sweeping and uh, beca because we maintain the you know loose object pointer relationship so here we show as very simple lines of C code right where three you know uh, a chunk of memory will be allocated and uh, there are some you know, pointer propagation work afterwards, and, and then, you know, one of the uh, memory is free, right? So to compare with existing work, right, you have to maintain, you know, existing work have to maintain such an, you know, heavyweight, uh, accurate, you know, object to pointer relationship, 
right? So by doing so, by the time you free uh, the object C, right, you know, okay, I need to, you know, also neutralize, you know, A dash R and B dash Q. So these are the pointers that should be, uh, you know, neutralized because otherwise it would be dangling. Well, in Compel, our work is basically saying, okay, we don't maintain such a relationship, right? We don't maintain what exactly is pointed to pointing to which object. I don't care. I only care about a list, right? I only, you know, uh, create a list of objects that actually uh, uh, contain all uh, live pointers, which some of them might be dangling. So uh, to handle those dangling pointers, we're basically using, first thing we use is delayed free, right? So every time you uh, free an object, Let's say, wait a minute, right? Just mark that, okay, this is our free. But all pointers at that moment are still pointing to those objects because it's safe right now because it's not free, right? So it is free only when the uh, parallel thread is actually, you know, invoked and uh, executing. So, so that thread may be actually checking, okay, for this object, you want to free this? Okay, let's see. I traverse the whole live pointers in parallel and then actually free, you know, neutralize those pointer pointing to the objects and a free, and then do the actual feed. So to illustrate that, we basically shows the more details of this approach. So here it shows this, you know, the, the, uh, our, you know, uh, some of the metadata we prepended to uh, a malloc function, for example. So we add a little bit, uh, you know, metadata to show that, okay, the state of each object. And uh, so in addition to that, we also use a shadow keep, right? Similar to Azure Sanitizer. So we basically uh, um, use a flat shadow, uh, shadow heap, so uh, which use the one byte, uh, you know, one byte of shadow heap, you know, corresponding to eight bytes in the user heap, right? And also within each byte, we basically use two bits. One is the what to show whether it is um, allocated or free. The other one is uh, to show whether there is a pointer or not, right? So. And then we, in parallel, we maintain a live list of pointers. Every pointer is basically contains a location of that pointers, right? And then that the location that, that pointer value may point into some of the uh, shadow uh, shadow heap to indicate whether it is dangling pointers or not, right? But to handle that, you know, that slide we show the more details and see how we use it to. Uh... So again, this is a shadow heap. It's, uh, you know, the beginning of the programs. Well, shadow keep is empty, right? Nothing is allocated. And the first stage, we basically show, okay, we allocate three memories and the corresponding location in shadow keep will be, you know, stored. And uh, then we do this pointer propagations, right? And some of the pointer will be assigned. So therefore the live pointer list will be added. And then we use delayed free. So delayed free basically saying, okay, I just mark some, you know, uh, state changes in the, in the object and then mark the corresponding shadow heap as saying deallocated. Sweeper thread may come uh, comes up right now and then he get free objects, get live pointers and say, oh, B is actually pointing to something that's not, uh, you know, it's freed already. So let's neutralize it. Right? So now this dangling point is removed. And then since nobody's pointing to C right now, so that's free C, actually do the actual free. So basically that's how it is working for P sweeper. And um, so doing so, all the, you, you see that all these operations are fast. Malloc, right? And there's, uh, you know, point to propagations and uh, also the free operations. All three operations are fast. Because of that, right? So the applications run on the left hand side will be running much faster. So they won't be distracted frequently uh, when, you know, for, for memory allocation, de allocation, or pointer sweeping work. So. So our, we are using our, actually using this RVM instrumentation to make sure um, to do this uh, pointer propagation work. And uh, also at runtime, we're intercepting all the memory allocation and deallocation uh, uh, you know, functions and to make sure that uh, all these uh, you know, uh, memory objects are properly handled. And uh, yes. So in addition to that, we also uh, has a minor contribution, which basically uh, says this the uh, object origin tracking. So OOT basically shows that, okay, instead of just, uh, you know, uh, neutralize the pointers, right, and crash the programs, can we assign something meaningful? So that, you know, this this will be in the natural which will trigger a fault, but still it may contain some information. For example, you know, it contains a slot number, 
right, which may point to a, you know, as in, used as index of a bigger array, and this array may point into some context information. Right? When, when we mean context information, we can show that uh, it's, it, it could be implemented, implemented like a sequence of, uh, you know, uh, return addresses, right? So, which we can provide is like, okay, the program crashes, and because of the uh, dangling pointer, and this pointer, you know, pointing to some object which are allocated at, you know, some context, right? So finally, we comes to evaluation. So we are answering the four questions. You know, first one is whether we uh, effectively mitigate uh, this, uh, you know, UF vulnerabilities, and second, we are actually are we, you know, uh, have good performance, and uh, can we scale to multi-threading applications, and finally, can we work on complex software? So, um, so we we have, uh, you know tested our, you know, using our evaluation on two CV examples. And uh, we also show this on two bugs, right? One is on Wireshark and the other one is our light HTTPD, right? So PSweeper can actually prevent all of them. In addition to that, we also actually compile the runtime performance of, you know, PSweeper in three different configurations. One is like, uh, you know, no sleep means that, you know, we have a parallel running thread, which is running, you know, all, which we're never sleep. I keep the allocating pointers, and the other one is uh, 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 the other one is every time we allocate uh, we sleep every five hundred milliseconds, right? And the last one is uh, one second, right? So we also show that our performance result is like we're doing much better than uh, Densen and Oscar in uh, uh, performance, and also as well as the memory overhead. So our memory overhead is between Densen and Oscar, even back two thousand six. Finally, we also show us uh, on these, uh, you know, multi-thread applications, PSweeper can work properly with with almost the same, you know, performance. Uh, finally, uh, we show we also apply to our PSweeper to some large programs. Here we show that in PSweeper enhanced Firefox version forty-seven, we actually uh, applied that we we use that to uh, uh, access some uh, website, famous website. We show an average of 3.7 average page load time uh, increase. So that comes to our conclusion. So we have, uh, you know, uh, you know P sweeper, which using a concurrent pointer sweeping technologies to, you know, uh, uh, defeating use after free exploits, and we have a good performance. Uh, yes, with that, I will take questions. Thank you. So we have a few minutes for questions. If you have any questions, please walk up to the mic, state your name and affiliation so that the speaker can follow up. So <clears throat> Gustavo from Trail of Bits. Um, so in the experiments that you perform in your paper, um, you you make the uh, pointers null when, you do, do, uh, um, when they are deallocated. So the program can crash in some circumstances that uh, usually is not is is not going to crash because it's pointing to some to some memory. Have you found any crash uh, in, for instance, Firefox or any big uh, um, programs that you try? Uh, we do actually. We we tried several uh, examples. We of this, uh, you know, we trying to use this uh, CV examples, right? So, but we uh, again, we, we when we crash, actually, we neutralize pointers. So, which means uh, we actually assign some values, so it will generate a deterministic crash. And by also, you, you ch if you check the core dump, check the memory dump, you can see that okay, this pointer is specially crafted, and you can use some of the information in our OOT, basically saying okay, you can see okay, which pointer, which object it, this dangling pointer is supposed to pointing to, and uh, you, you can find more information about okay. this. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Andreas Cruz uh, from the Free University of Amsterdam. Uh, in your work, uh, the, uh, you have a second thread that is continuously polling for events or continuously sweeping. Uh, so you're using double the amount of cores. And I'm, I'm curious how much of the overhead uh, yeah, that hides to, uh, when you compare it to other approaches. So when you actually saturate uh, the, the amount of cores on the CPU, uh, have you compared performance to other approaches that don't use multiple cores? Sure, sure. That's a good, very good question. So, so one thing I need to... Uh, um, you know, uh, clarifies like uh, we're not using double threads. 
for example, a, th a multi-thread application that has 100 application thread, we only use one. Or two, you can configure, but not double. Okay, because only one or two thread is needed to just do the, do this pointer sweeping job. So we're actually not doubling the, this work. So also, you're right. So if, if the CPU is saturated, then, of course, if we're using the second thread, we definitely that overhead will show up. But in majority of the cases, as you, as you can see, the user applications, right, the majority of the time, the, the actual, there are actual cores which are idle. Right? Why not just using that to improve our user, user experience? So that's the point. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Jiezhou uh, University Rochester. So I'm not clear of uh, the, the delayed free thing. So uh, does that mean after the after the after the using of a pointer, you uh, delayed the free? Is there any potential danger between the real free and the real after the real use uh, of the finish use of the pointer? Uh, no, there we peace sweeper can guarantee there's no issue on that because by the time you do fr do delayed free, so there's no problem, right? Because at that time the object is still there, all the dangling pointers still pointing to this uh, this original object, right? And peace sweeper when peace sweeper uh, doing the work, it will say, okay, this object is supposed to be free but not actually free. Mm -hmm. Then the the peace sweeper does is first scaling all the pointers neutralizing them, make sure nobody pointed to it, and then free it. So by doing so, there, will, there won't be any risk conditions between, you know, uh, there's a time, there's a dangling pointing to, mm -hmm. to an object, and it's, it's free. Okay, thank yes. you. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, Dong Peng Xu from uh, University of New Hampshire. Uh, I'm wondering how do you pr uh, track the propagation of the pointer? For example, uh, there could be one big object and there's an like an array in the object and the, the pointer point to the base address and you will use the base address to calculate all the elements inside that array. How do you like track all the different pointers pointing to other elements in that array? So very good question. So we actually to improve that, right? So we have a performance issue if, if we tracking every byte, right? So we have actually have a two level of, uh, uh, you know, sh uh, shadow heap. Uh, one is per page, the other one is per uh, eight byte. So for, for, for large objects, we can use per page based the tracking. Doing so, we, we can, you know, quickly, when you do allocate, allocate a, a page, basically we can say mark those high level shadow heaps say quickly allocated. When deallocation, do the same thing. I see. And uh, pointers for pointer propagation, right? We can just check uh, tracking this pointer. Is it pointing to something that is meaningful? If it is, okay, we we allows you to propagate, right? And we also track the state of the original pointer. Whether this pointer is already in the live list. If it's already in the live list, there's no need to to track. So there are some optimization technologies too. So you you also have a like liveness analysis. We don't have liveness in that, so we ch we check the shadow heap at a runtime to see whether this pointer is live. Okay. Yes. That means it, it will be used in the future. Uh, it will. It is. Yeah. So which means that it is live. Okay. It may be used by by the program in the future. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, Philip from U Ho University Bochum. So um, you are using or you are um, pretty much intercepting malloc in order to um, mitigate um, use of the freeze. Um, Firefox and other browsers, they use custom allocators. So they use malloc once and then they use custom allocators to, to pretty much give out smaller portions of uh, memory to uh, whatever uh, needs memory. And are you um, hooking this? them as well to to keep them uh, keep track of them yeah so our, uh, this is a very good question so right now our our work only tracks those uh, you know glbc uh, you know uh, malloc uh, you know uh, memory allocation operations and also the uh, system calls for yeah. any kind of a customized memory allocations we we do not track but uh, but by concept we can also extend our work to track those kind of things mm -hmm. yes so that Pretty much means that um, by not tracking custom allocators, that are you that you use of the freeze within one portion of uh, custom allocators or the same kind of objects. Let's put it like that. 
um, there are still use of the freeze possible, I think. It's correct, yes. Okay. And I think it would also increase the overhead by, by some sort if you would uh, instrument those, right? Those custom allocators. Right, but again, okay. the, the overhead will be, you know, throw to the parallel running thread. I see. And okay. then that parallel running thread could, could be configurable. Yes, okay, thanks. Time for a very good question, last question. Yeah, okay. This is a follow-up question about the risk condition. So uh, uh, after you've delayed free an object, uh, but before the sweeper thread uh, real uh, free the object, uh, so uh, uh, if the user code uh, still use the object pointer, it's, it's okay because the object is still there, but you can't detect the, the use up free bug, right, in this period. Because well, if that is called use up free, because that's using that that is not dangling yet. Right? Uh, but 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 actually, it's uh, in 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 uh, uh, usually uh, for uh, in. But the, that that is actually is uh, use up a free. But right. Yeah, yes, sense, right. right. You're right. So you can't de detect in this case, right? So there is a risk condition that you can't detect some uh, uh, use up a free bug, right? Correct. So, so for some cases, if there is use after free uh, uh, box, right, a P sweeper because of delayed free, it may not be able to detect it. But we are definitely going to prevent any kind of uh, you know use after free exploit using that. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you.